transactions. You know, you want to buy and then you want to sell and you want to make a huge profit. Now, we can, it may be you want to buy after 10 years or 15 years, sell after 15 years. But it's a transactional thing. Rather than spending a whole lot of money uh, to really run a business and create a product and do all those kinds of things, you know the argument. Even Paul Volcker's made this argument. Too many people are going to Wall Street, too many smart people, mm -hmm. and, and working with you. And it's all about transactions, yeah, I, I don't not about building something. Well, let me, let me, let me take a counter to that okay. in terms of what we do. So we're not about transactions at all. In fact, we do very few transactions, maybe one or two a year. Okay. We buy stakes I mean, you're, in business. You're not a pure trader. We're not a trader at investor. all. We don't trade. We buy yeah. a stake in a business. We get actively involved in the business. We work to make the business more valuable. And by the way, pretty much everything we've ever owned, with the exception of borders, has a higher value today than it did after we sold it, which means that the impact that we've had on the business has been positive. I'm also an, you know, an executive officer of a business. I'm, I'm the chairman of the board of a company called Howard Hughes. This is a business that I created. It's a business I created by taking 34 assets outside of general growth, sticking them into a new company, recruiting a management team, right. building a board of directors, uh, and this company is doing marvelous things. So, for example, in, in New York City, we own the South Street Seaport. Uh, management team, again, I want to take credit for their work, but what they've accomplished is they got approvals to do a new, uh, they're going to completely transform the seaport. They're going to do a new, new development there. We're building a new shopping center uh, in, uh, in Las Vegas. We're changing kind of the landscape in Hawaii with a 60-acre development of 9 million square feet of, of real estate. So these are companies that are building and adding enormous value, and the business, that would not have happened uh, were we not to have taken a stake in general growth and spun off that entity. What about Procter & Gamble? Uh, Procter & Gamble, uh, great company. Uh, we've uh, 175 years of you know, generally pretty fabulous successes. Mm -hmm. Great brand names. Great brand names. Uh, last four years have been very difficult for the company. Yeah. Uh, and you came in adamant to remove Bob McDonald. Uh, the, you know, we thought it was time. He was CEO. And uh, by the way... It was, he hadn't been there that long. He had been there about uh, four years. Okay, that's not and, long. And uh, he had been with the company obviously a long period of time. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, the, because most of the capital in the stock market is passive, investors can't themselves make these kind of changes. So they rely on someone to take a lead, okay, which we did on Procter & Gamble. By the way, in Procter & Gamble, I worked very quietly with the lead director. We would speak periodically. It was only when we felt it was time that I made a public presentation about what I, the concerns were at P&G. And a couple of weeks later, Bob, I think, resigned of his own of his own doing. Now that stock's gone, you know, it's up and 35%. And the former CEO's come back, one of the legendary names. And AJ Laffley's a fabulous CEO, and uh, I think he's going to do a great job turning the business. He's also working on recruiting the next founder of the company. But as a, you know, I got enormous number of phone calls from Procter & Gamble alums uh, thanking us for the work that we did at, at P&G. And the same thing is true at, at General Growth. I mean, if you look at the Buckstown family, had a $5 billion net worth going into mm -hmm. the the uh, financial crisis that was down to 25 million when the uh, general growth stock went from 63 to dollars a share to 20 you know, 30 cents we helped take it back to 34 dollars a share that's been a great thing not just for a wealthy family but for the the pension funds that own that stock for the you know I get thank you notes from investors who've invested alongside